and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have a couple tech technical newcomers, but technically also returning brothers to the temple. Yeah. Part of the multi-headed monster that is Tin Hat Games, which is currently celebrating 10 years of, inf of inflicting its madness on the tabletop scene. <laughs> in the yeah. in the red corner, we, ha we have the lead designer for the upcoming Weird World, um, Simone Anselimi. Hi-oh, hi-oh. Nice to and be here. In the blue corner, we have one, we have one of the madmen behind the layout of the thing. Um, Matteo Batti. Hello, hello there. How you two, how you two doing tonight? Well, tonight for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tonight yeah. we are we are panicking about our upcoming Kickstarter, and yeah, it's it, it's just a, a normal day of of, uh, of the month before the Kickstarter. Mm -hmm. Before the apocalypse. <laughs> <laughs> Now this is the second time I've had I've had some something from you guys on the sh on the show. The for the first, of course, was having Alessandro on for to talk about Xenoscape. Yep. Oh. And we we didn't do a thing about uh, OSR or yeah. I, I'm, I'm oh, wrong. Oh, right. We did. We did. We did for obsolete shitty rules when that was. Yep. Um, yep. When that was ki when that was um, kick starting. Yep. And that that was all that was also with Alessandro. So Yep, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. It's the Te same author, yeah. Yeah, so tech technically I've had Tin hat on twice. Just not just not you just not you guys <laughs> yet. Which is why which yeah, is why I said part part of part of the family. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's part of the family. And Simone of course are the newcomer on the on the scene. Is is a, a an author of uh, uh, many um, role playing game in in Italy, many small role play game in Italy, yeah. at thing adventures and so on. And uh, he joined uh, Tinet Games uh, last year, and uh, he shared with us our um, his um, uh, his Project. intention to, to to create a new thing that is that is um, weird world. And we madly fall in love with the idea, with the pitch, with him also, uh, with his team, <laughs> and, and we decided to, you know, do the mad thing again with him, inside the team, of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's true. It's true. You can, you can trust him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well. Now, with that said, one of the traditions that I have around here is. Opening with the humble beginnings. So, for both of you, since it's your first time here, I'd like you to to go into your introduction to role playing games and what made it stick. And I'll start with you, Simone. Okay. When I start uh, to play which game, I start with uh, Red Box, and I, uh, talking honestly, I start to Red Box, but I. Uh, understood the rules uh, from the 3.0 uh, Dungeons and Dragons because for a kid uh, it's not so simple to understand the taco and uh, uh, the other things like like this so Even I don't uh, struggle with Thaco yeah yeah yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but with when I was a kid it's too difficult so I I, I fall in love with the with this hobby because uh, when you I play a lot of video games uh, mm -hmm. since I was a kid, and when you try to to role playing game to play a role playing game for the first time, you have so many options that uh, a video game can you can do everyone uh, everything you want in a video game. So uh, if you enter in a room in a role playing game and you have to choose from uh, countless option, is is it was. Blow my mind away. So uh, this is how I fall in love with uh, role playing games, and mm -hmm. the uh, red box is, is the first for me. Yeah. Yeah. 
yeah, I can I can certainly get that. And yeah, it is it is quite a bit of a leap. I'm not, I'm not surprised it was Redbox. That, that's oh, that's a pretty common answer. Uh, but Mateo, what about you? What about you? How did you first get yeah. your start? I'm trying to figure out something that is not the classic, <laughs> you know, average <laughs> red box thing, but for me is more or less the same red box. But I, f I felt in love with the role play game, with the uh, horror game uh, like, uh, you know, Vampire um, and uh, um, Call of Tulu, that is my, of course, uh, uh, long time love about the. Uh, on the um, on on the scene, I I, I felt in love about uh, 15 years ago with the Call of Tulu, and still today I'm a uh, master of uh, of Call of Tulu. And mm -hmm. uh, well, that escalated quickly. Of course, we we did some tournament. We 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 have we had this thing in Italy role play game tournament it it's a little bit you know italian to explain but we, we had them and uh, we 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 tried a lot of things we we met a lot of people and we decided to to create uh, uh Tinat game sting uh, mm -hmm. uh, that uh, ten, 10 years ago to to, to better create uh, uh, and uh, manage all the our our creativity around the different projects mm -hmm. yeah it, as don't worry don't worry if your introduction to it isn't isn't what someone would consider the standard there is no entry point that um or no form of entry point i haven't already heard in the five years that i've been doing this okay so, okay so it's okay I'm not gonna say I've, I'm not gonna say I've seen it all, but I've seen a lot. I've seen a lot, and uh, I know you, 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 you've seen the most part, I think, in five mm -hmm. years. Um, yeah, not a, not as many not as many not as many as people think. Um, got their got their start with D, with D and D, and for and for some they never they never even touched it. So yeah, that's it, it's a fact. Mm -hmm. That's some, that's something to keep in mind with it, with this sort of thing. So, with Weird World, I I know before we went live, we had talked we had talked a bit about the Mo the um, influence of Mobius, which is kind yep. of, which somebody being influenced by Mobius is um, <laughs> a case of do you have any do you have how little that narrows it down? But how did how did the concept of World 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 um, come to be? Okay, I when I start to um, thinking about uh, Weird World, I, I I think that the main question uh, now we are adult and we have a, a <laughs> life made by work, family, and stuff like this, and the player, uh, the players too. So uh, <clears throat> I wanted to create a, a game that it's simple to uh, to understand the rule set. But also the setting, the lore, because uh, one of the main point of Weird World is uh, the the setting is uh, very wide, yeah, and you have to you can put um, put it in uh, every everything uh, everything you want. So any influences. So the the setting is a uh, uh, is a weird sci fantasy role playing game. So uh, you can. Be a, a guy with a sword and a plate armor, but with a plasma gun uh, facing aliens or robot or other stuff like this. So you you can put in weird world whatever you want, and mm -hmm. uh, and the same is for the for the rule set. Uh, the rule set are simple, but uh, I hope I hope that is is. Um, easy to make house rules with the basic mechanics that i put in the in the manual mm -hmm. so the the to turn back to the influences that you asked me uh imagine a word uh, like uh, azark mm -hmm. by moebius cover yep. in dirt junk and uh, all the 90s influence that you that you can think so mm -hmm. it's uh it's hilarious. It's uh, violent. It's 
in a way uh, old school uh, so it, the mortality is high but you don't have to to pay um, to pay attention to to struggling for survive because uh, the setting is uh, in a distant future in uh, 6042 mm -hmm. and uh, the the earth uh, in the earth flows a uh, mysterious energy called x energy and uh, this is like the the mana in a, in a fantasy setting we can uh, call it like this and that uh, make weird everything so you can uh, encounter stuff creature like uh, wolf's dart that are uh, that are creature that mix a uh, lizard and a wolf so mm -hmm. <laughs> this fun uh, wolf's dart and uh, and stuff like this so uh, i i think weird uh, the tnet games uh, like this for the weirdness of the project and uh, mm -hmm. and yeah, we, 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 we love the, that kind of, you know, mix uh, with the many, many things. Because Weird World is um, something like, uh, um, of course, a post, 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 post apocalyptic, apocalyptic game, but is also a post, 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 um, you know, the, the worst of our society game. Yeah. So everything is uh, uh, is went too far, but instead of those grim uh, planet like Mad Max or something horrible like uh, the, the classic dream, grim dark uh, fantasy like uh, uh, Bloodborne uh, things, uh, Berserk things, etc., uh, Weirworld is a game about. Uh, mm, you know uh, the the about finding little things uh, to defend uh, and to live uh, uh, day by day uh, it, the first thing i met simone and this project uh, the first uh, thing i um it went to, into my mind was borderlands the first borderlands uh, a game uh, a, a crazy game a a logic game but it was a, a blast for me and and uh, it was the same for, for uh, um weird world and uh with the wheel start and with the final rule book we uh, were trying to uh, take uh, every aspect of this uh, this setting and to put in the book the, mm -hmm. the colors the 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 the, the mood uh, the, the the drama even for the the character the the, the continuing mutation things etc everything uh, will you, you can find it in the wheel start and you will find it in the in the, the final book of course mm -hmm. yeah yeah I, I i can say the uh, the this this post apocalypse you don't have to struggle to find water and food but you have to pay attention of what you eat and what you drink because you may wake up with uh, um, uh, unwanted mutations so if you want mm -hmm. to wake up with the same number of eyes and limbs you have to pay attention of what you drink and what you eat so mm -hmm. this is the, the the main difference if you wanna yeah and with that with that in mind i'm i'm looking through the influences that you listed out in the um oh, weird start and yep. there there's a there's a few that there's a few that i'd like to get a feel for what um what for where that influence ca carried into the full the full um system because okay. with, with some of the, with some of them, like say Ken, like say Kenshi or Realms of Arcania, um, or even John, even John Carter, I can I can certainly see where that influence is present. The only ex the one exception to this is going to be um, the Last Torch, obviously because okay. um, I don't think that's been translated into English. Yeah, yeah. The the Last Torch is is my one of my favorite RPGs as a fantasy uh, role playing game that uh, is very gritty, very uh, brutal, uh, and high mortality. 
slightly slightly unfair mortality so uh, this is what i uh, i i take from that game is the uh, health point the the a minimum quantity of health point that doesn't doesn't increase with the with the level so you start with uh, these hit points and you have these for the rest of the game so the mortality is i2 in weird world uh, for the dnd aspect i i take the the familiarity of the system because you have to to in weird world you have to play like a normal uh D, &D game so uh there is a, a dice roll to hit the target there is a, a hit points there is a classic style game but uh with many differences and when we talk about the rules i i explain in uh, in depth this and for the the other uh influences i think kenshi if it, mm -hmm. you play kenshi mildra do you ever play Yes, I love Kenshi. Yeah. Kenshi does not love me back. <laughs> <laughs> it's typical of Kenshi. It's why we love it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I think the, 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 this video game is very amazing. It started like an RPG that came a city builder and then finished to a, a real-time strategy game is is amazing. And the, the environment that you that you live have uh, some similarity with Weird World. And this uh, world of junk, this world uh, primitive uh, environment, uh, corrupted by many artifacts of different ages. I like the the the, the mood that create the, the game, and I try to recreate in uh, in Weird World with a with a little bit of more uh, hilariousness. Mm -hmm. So that's it. Yeah, I I have respond and. <laughs> Now with now, with that in with that in mind, uh, okay. You ref when it came when it came to the when it came to the visual direction, I know like I said I know Morbius was was brought up, but for whatever reason, especially with especially with some of the some of the more out there art, I was also reminded of the art styles of like Rob, of like Rob Zombie whenever he does art. Um, Thank is that, you so much. <laughs> is that was was that in was that intentional or is that or is that just a happy coincidence? I, coincidence, absolutely coincidence. <laughs> but I I appreciate that, and Jacopo Poletti, the artist, mm -hmm. uh, I think appreciate too. So thank you, thank you. Yeah, it's nice. Now, but Simone, Simone, every time I I always told you. Uh, if someone asks you if it's a coincidence or if it's a, 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 a strategy, always ask, uh, yes, of course, I'm the author. So I'm I, planning I, this I many I'm years planning. ago. <laughs> Sorry, Mildra is, is, is young and... Uh... I have to... <laughs> I, well, I suppose I suppose I know who's the abbot and who's the Costello in this particular part in this particular pair. Um, but, Costello, what? So, sorry. Oh, Ab abbot and Costello is an old is an old comedy duo. They're the get they're the guys who are responsible for the who's on first get gag. That's, be, that's okay, 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 <laughs> okay. Along along with a just a lot a lot of other word a lot of other word gags like the old. I got a job at the bakery. What are you doing? Loafing? I was I was doing that right there. No, not that not that kind of loafing. Oh. No, okay. But one of the, one of the one of the things that I could, that I noticed when it came to describing the the world of the of the um let's see would it be would it be the the twenty seventh century. The twenty seventh century. If we're in, if we're in the six thousands, by that point, uh, but instead, instead of doing a full world map, which I don't, I don't know if you guys have pl have planned to do that, you have brief descriptions of different regions. And I'm guessing that's something you're gonna. Is that something you're gonna carry forward into the full book, or do you plan on having a 
a full map or even a map of a of certain regions. Okay. The the main idea in the core book there are there is a um, small part of the world that calls Costa Clo um, Cloaca Coast. Sorry. And uh, the idea in the Kickstarter is to, um, with a stretch goal, expand uh, point by point the, the, the entire world. Oh, not the entire, but uh, many spots. Because like in the Gazetteer for uh, all Dungeons and Dragons, to, <laughs> to Redbox, um, explain a little part of, uh, of world step by step. Because one of the things that I want to, to do with Weird World is not to... Uh, I think that too much lore is a cage. Because um, if you have too much rules to stay, uh, to, to, to pay attention, to stay in the setting, it's not, uh, it's not always good. So I, we try to create a setting that uh, allows to you uh, to... to uh, put it in many influences, but with a, a, a specific a specific point to 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 the to the lore to the set. Like, uh, can we spoil Matteo? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, sure, okay. okay. Sure. Uh, in a, in the Kickstarter, we hope to unlock uh, two expansion that um, describe the primitive society in uh, 6042 and the futuristic society in the 6042 and mm -hmm. in which there are many spots of the, the the world so this is how we 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 plan it so don't um, we don't give you too much information but a little spot like the gazetteer for for dt so mm -hmm. this is our idea yeah yeah now yeah and we are Sorry, mm -hmm. uh, we are planning also to, you know, with the, uh, the highest uh, tier uh, of the stretch goals, we are looking to create uh, a almost finished map of the world because, you know, in the post, 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 post apocalyptic, uh, they don't have cartographer and so on. So yeah. uh, we, we, something more like a, a almost finished um, um, sketch. Uh, a decoupage, a decoupage of, of yeah, yeah mm. of notes, uh, but yeah, we are we are planning to not only create a single, uh, you know, single book. Uh, this is the only thing that will come out in the history of this game. But Simone has a lot of ideas, and we want to start something from this, uh, of course, from this Kickstarter to and add things we uh, we are looking to uh, both physical and digital but of course depending on how the kickstarter is going we, we will decide and uh, we we are looking to unveil more and more information about geographics and uh, species uh, cities and so on mm -hmm. yeah, yeah we, we want to do that but uh, in to spread the information into adventure, into a, um, I don't know, a manual of items, that spot of information that you make uh, uh, the entire world lore. Mm -hmm. Now, shifting into the um, player-facing end, end of things, as as I understand it, the um, stat setup that you have that you have is go is going to be you're doing something that's a, that's going to be based on die size instead of um hard numbers like in like in a lot of cases um what pro what prompted le what prompted leaning towards um leaning towards die sizes instead instead because i th the most pre the most prevalent game that d that does the die size approach is of course going to be savage worlds so I'm cu yep. so I'm curious, is is there a was there a game in it in Italy that did the die size thing that I'm not aware of, that you that was uh, inspiration or where did, what made you want to take that approach? I take this approach um, simply for the the I like this type of uh, of uh, of stats with a die size. Uh, I think uh, Urbaniros of Tinet Games is with yeah. die size too, right? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and uh, the um, 
I, I choose this because I think uh, the role playing game is a uh, is based on a cooperative game. So if you have a uh, size dice when you are uh, if you put a d4 on uh, stats, you have you need an help to to make a check on these uh, on these stats. So uh, this this type of uh, uh, of choose is for uh, in increment for uh, the collaboration for make easier the collaboration between players. And the uh, the twist in this uh, in this rule set are uh, there are two the, the, uh, there is there are uh, four stats okay um, strong dexterity intelligence and personality. Mm -hmm. The base mechanic is uh, you have to reach or exceed a value of difficulty. Uh, called uh, insidi insidiousness level, I think, in English version, and uh, and if you reach it or exceed, you have a success. But you have two uh, pools of points called vigor and psyche points that uh, you can take a point from that pool and put on your dice roll to boost your result. So if you take one point to vigor in a strength check and you make, uh, for example, four on your d6 roll and put one point of vigor, the result was uh, five. So uh, this type of the, 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 this type of rules, I think, I hope, it can um, reduce the aleatory, I think, it's the right word, aleatory of dice roll. So if you need to have succeed in a, in a check, you can spend these, uh, these points. But if you uh, reach the zero in uh, one of uh, the two pools, you have to black out and and take a sleep. So you have mm -hmm. to pay attention to, to this. Another, yeah. uh, if if I if I can speak about rules, mm -hmm. another uh, things is the x x counter uh, x counter is a, a is a counter that consider the value of x contamination in your body, and when you reach the hundred percent, you have to draw a random mutation. And spoiler: the random mutation are not good, so uh, you have to to pay attention to to this. Mm -hmm. And is it a case where you where when you if you're doing the whole wizardry using a spe using a spell will um will increase will will increase that value? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. For a wizard, uh, mm -hmm. um, there is. Um, a type of, of uh, character that you can play is weird art. I don't know if the pronunciation is right. It's like the the pun uh, weird and zard, like wizard, mm -hmm. but weird. Okay, mm -hmm. <laughs> that can cast weird artry <laughs> and uh, more uh, X energy. The weird art have in his body more powerful. More powerful the spell will be. But you have to pay attention because if you reach hundred percent, you draw mutation so uh, it's good to have uh, an, a big value of that but you have to pay attention to do not to not reach the maximum volume or or you have to draw a, yeah. a mutation mm -hmm. like many mechanics of a weird world uh, th th this one uh, energy x counter or the uh, manage of your um, Resource. Traits, uh, resources and so on um, one of the key point of the game is that the the, the mechanics are quite uh, deep you know are, are quite uh, structured in the game are mm -hmm. a, a deep part of the game but uh, they are not so you know heavy they are not so um, crunchy. yeah they are not so crunchy so like the for example crafting aspect of the game is very present and you you will need and you will have to uh, um, uh, create things from junk around you and so on but it's not uh, uh, the boring part of the game even for some board games are uh, some board games sorry even for some uh, video games uh, the craft part are the most boring part of of, of that um, of the recent titles Mm -hmm. But in we world are, you know, a, an easy aspect of the game, a crucial but not so, you know, not so time spending. You don't have to spend many uh, resources uh, and many time 
mm. in game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, crafting things. Mm -hmm. Now I, I use the. Mm -hmm. I, oh, sorry. Oh, go ahead. Ah, okay. Uh, um, the the same. This principle is used for everything in Weird World. I I hope that I create a rule set easy to learn, hard to master. Because if you want to play um, casually, you can you can you can do it easily. Because you have four stats and you have to reach or exceed the value and stop. But if you want to go in deep with build or stuff like this, you have uh, many options like mutation, wizardry, skill, and you can go in deep with build and power playing if, if, if it allows. So um, I hope to, to, to create a rule set that, uh, can, that permit a player uh, to choose how uh, they want to play. You mm -hmm. want to play casually, you have to read the basic rule and play like this. You want to go in deep, you can do that. You make more than one, one session, you take XP, you leveling up, and you build your character. So, mm -hmm. this is. Yeah. And now, when it comes to when it comes to character creation, um, there we have we obviously we have we obviously have the assi the assignment of co of of um, core stats um, and that then the whole thing with vi with vigor and psyche and then origins um, now with the, within within all of that within all of that um, I think what one of the things I'm one of the things I'm curious about is it is is going to be how you guys are going to have advancement work. Um, is it is it going to be a case of you gain XP and then you spend it to improve to improve certain aspects of a character, or are you guys going on a level like threshold, or is it something in between? No, no, it's the classical way. You the, the classical way uh, you gain XP when you reach uh, hundred XP. You take a skill. Mm -hmm. Stop. And and don't in, don't increase doesn't increase every level, so it's always a uh, hundred experience point. Mm -hmm. So it's simple, uh, and every skill, every level uh, that you reach is a big um, change in your character, because the skills are very uh, impactanti, Matteo. How do you say? It is very. Uh, uh, skills are very, um, <laughs> um, you know, are a very good part of your character, a very proponent part yeah, of yeah. your character. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it is the, the it's very classic. You in the in the weird start um, there are I think uh, five origins but uh, with uh, less subtype that uh, we put in the core rule book. There are five origins uh, humans, alien, um, Mutants, uh, automatons, and wizard, mm -hmm. and uh, every of that have a singularity that humans are uh, bad people. Are few, fortunately, and are uh, they think that they are the the leader of the world, but the true this is not true. Uh, and the alien is violent and anger too, because they uh, trapped on the planet. Uh, they want to. Uh, came back come back to the native planet but uh, they can't so they are uh, aggressive and the what i say about uh, mutant the mutant are the largest species of the of the earth and they are the the weirdest form of the uh, you, you you can think about because uh, they are additional limbs uh, additional legs arms uh, fleshy wings uh, weird eye or, or or stuff like this and uh, they are ostracized by human aliens and kicked out from the colony. Mm -hmm. So the mu mutant lives in the mutated land, and it's it's not it's not quite good to live in mutated land. Uh, the automaton uh, are a very powerful uh, character because you start the game with an high value of defense mm -hmm. and high value of uh, damage reduction. But uh, for every damage you suffer, it's really diffi 
difficult to regain because you don't you can't go to sleep like other organic creature and uh, mm -hmm. regain the the points but you have to rebuild some parts so you have to find it uh make a check uh, a successful check to uh make the crafting good mm -hmm. so it's not so simple it's 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 very powerful but it's a cost for a party to have a, an automaton uh, in it yeah. and the the wizard the wizard are the 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 most weird uh, uh character because uh, they look like humans but uh, they are correlated to the x energy the mysterious energy that uh, uh characterize the the, the the earth of 6042 mm -hmm. and they can do spell so uh, they are very confused about uh, um, his origins and they uh, try to reach try to search uh, weird items that is the only thing they remember when they woke up so there are a uh, weird and uh, mysterious uh, character the wizard and is uh, correlated to the lore of the game that i hope can i explain mm -hmm. in the future uh, in the future uh, product yeah now i with when creating a weird zerd I, I saw that there's a, a short list of random rituals that they can utilize and i'm guessing yeah in searching for weird artifacts they can that's the main way that they can get new rituals uh, okay uh, it's oh, not for making it oh good uh yeah yeah the ritual is uh when you in the weird start uh, we don't say anything about this but if you uh find a, any all the items that you're searching for uh, you have capable to make the ritual but the result of the ritual is not so uh it's not so epic Mm -hmm. It's it's. Mm -hmm. I wanna take this mysterious for the release. <laughs> mm -hmm. And when it comes when it comes to muta when it comes to mutations, uh, I'm get there. There's obviously there's obviously a handful of e of each t of each type: the harmful, the tolerated, and the harmonious. Um, yep. I'm guessing. I'm guessing that there's get, that in the full book. There's going to be an, enough examples of, muta of mutations of each type to randomly roll on a chart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Th th there is a lot of more uh, mutations in the core rulebook. They're talking about numbers uh, in the core rulebook. In the complete, uh, are forty skill and more than 50 uh, mutation and like 12 or 15 uh, mm -hmm. wizardry so you have a lot of more option in the core rule book and the harmful uh, mutation in the core rule book are uh, really really nasty so mm -hmm. you have to pay more attention in the core rule book you have to pay more more attention yeah but when and when it comes to wizardry I, sh I should also note something I, fi I find interesting is different tiers of effect based on how how much um, and how much and how far that energy track is is closer to 100. Uh, the I'm, refer I'm referring to the ENX level. Like yeah, how, the how more the more mutated, the more energy X you have inside you, the more effects are your wizardry and so on but as simone said the most important thing is to remember that yes you are maybe more powerful than before but you are um, more and more near the next uh, mutation mm -hmm. and if you are uh, unlucky you can get a very uh, as simone said nasty mutation a very uh, bad mutation and it uh, 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 a not so good mutation may change your life, may change your game, may change how, uh, and this is uh, uh, important too, how the other species and the other uh, citizen and the other survivals see you. Because, for example, the uh, mutants are very hated uh, because the, they are, you know, 
related to the X. Yeah, yeah, they are related to the mysterious energy and they are, uh, you know, ugly in, in, in some sense. There's a lot of hatred and a lot of uh, uh, hate for uh, the, the mutants because everyone is curious about the energy X, but mm -hmm. are in, in, in the same place scared of their effect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, one of the one of the things I find interesting when I look at uh, when I look at the equipment is in regard to in regard to weapons, the fact that each one of them has their their own particular effect when it comes to critical hits instead of a universal crit. Uh, what prompted what prompted that? Since obviously a lot of games will have it that if you roll. A cer at a certain threshold, you just do extra da you just do extra damage or something to that effect. But instead, each um, each weapon has a certain a certain additional thing to critical hits. Yeah, I I, I choose this because in in general the, the the combat system I hope uh, that is not the 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 same. I this is my target. I go to the target and I hit it. it until he is dying, so uh, you have to um, you you go to create uh, an attack when you uh, result of the damage is the maximum of your dice. For example, uh, if you hit with a sword that goes uh, one eight uh, one d eight damage, if you if result was eight is eight uh, goes crit, and in the case of the 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 sword goes bleeding. Mm -hmm. This is for the the same for the blunt weapon that uh, damage the health point and the vigor points because uh, some enemies uh, have a particular defense and you can't is not wise to go straight uh, to the to yeah. the enemy. You have to you have to uh, make a strategy if there you are a, you have a character that uh, damage the vigor of the the creature so uh, the wizard can cast easily the spell on this uh, uh, on this creature because the vigor points are the uh, difficulty class for some uh, wizardry so you have to to uh, damage not the only health point classic health point but the vigor psyche and with the crit with this uh, crit system you can you can go. Uh, yeah, you can, you can do this in. Target. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Matteo. Yeah, no, no, but uh, it's, it's, <laughs> it's, uh, it's very interesting because I think that the classic, you know, like old fashioned box uh, is uh, uh, like I'm standing in front of you, you're standing in front of me, we start punching, and at, at some point after many rounds, <laughs> one of our two will, will, will go down. And this add a uh, uh, very uh, intense uh, strategy to the game, but as many rules as we said uh, before, uh, is not so heavy to understand. Just, mm -hmm. you know, you have that weapon that can cause additional thing. Of course, yeah. it's up to you to, uh, you know, uh, doing the math and starting use your brain to become a better fighter if you yeah. don't want you know if you want to play uh, br brain dead totally and start uh, charging things of you course will die. you can of course you can use your weapon and so on but uh, it is more tactical to use some specific weapon in some specific uh, combat and I think this is, uh, you know, a quite uh, easy to understand, quite uh, uh, light uh, rules, but it, it changed the games for real. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, going f going for going forward. Oh. Obvious, obviously, the, obviously in the weird start, there's there was the ex there was the sample adventure, but you also. I I couldn't help but notice that you had a um a, ni a nice little gag in the table of contents of adventures that were um redacted. <laughs> yeah. 
Oh. But in the but with the full book, one of the th one of the things I'm curious about is how is um. Do you pl do you plan on ha do you plan on having like a short list of of small modules in the in the in the tail end of the book? We put one adventure in the core rulebook, and we hope to unlock the other adventure in the Kickstarter. So we have a lot of adventure uh, ready, and we have to plan how the, uh, unlock this. So in yeah. the in the core manual, we think we we, we put it in uh, one adventure and uh, unpaid. Well, how is the title of the the um, uh, unpaid over war, unpaid over I over time, see, I'm paid over time, I'm paid over work, um, and this is a, a, a classic adventure, and uh, I, I hope it, I hope it's fun. Mm. Yeah, it's I, only only one in the court manual. We, uh, of course, the our our policy uh, is to include in the in the rule book something to play, because we don't want you know to to, to give you the rule book and and so. Uh, after you read everything, go, go fly by yourself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we want <laughs> fly to, by you yourself. Know, uh, we want to uh, give you something to to play that that night um, with your friends, with your group, and so on. Uh, about the Kickstarter, we decided to unlock only gaming material. Uh, mm -hmm. there, there's a lot of Kickstarter around that are unlocking. You know, something like T-shirts or uh, um, gadgets uh, and so on. We decided to unlock primary uh, gaming material. So, for example, uh, we will unlock uh, um, postcards uh, on, on the front. The, it, we will have an illustration and on the back a description, a complete description of uh, that um, that weapon we, or, or, or the weird weapon. item, weird artifact, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, so and we have mm, many adventures to unlock, adventures even by other uh, uh, Italian author we collaborated with. Mm -hmm. So uh, at, at, we hope at the final day of Kickstarter we will have, uh, depending of course on the perk you, you decide to pledge, uh, we will have uh, a lot of things included. So uh, basically, we are working on four adventure complete adventures, uh, plus the one included, and many many gaming materials. Uh, and at the game, uh, at the end of the Kickstarter, we hope to give uh, the, the gamers a lot, but not everything, of course. Uh, the world, uh, of the weird world uh, things uh, to better understand every aspect of the game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We plan to make a sound, um, a soundtrack for Weird World. Yep. We are working on, and we yeah. hope to unlock it. We are hope to unlock it, but uh, the the main uh, stretch goal is straight to the game, as Matteo says. Yeah, mm -hmm. we will have, of course, uh, an art book. Uh, for example, we, we always invest in uh, Italian artists, uh, in um, uh, talented Italian artists, and we decided to unlock the, um, uh, um, an art book dedicated to all the art of Weirwood. But mainly, we will have gaming materials, even a uh, dice set. Yeah, dedicated dice set of mm -hmm. uh, you know uh, werewolf. Yeah, no. Yeah, the are... Sorry, sorry. I go, go, will. Go. <laughs> I will certainly. I will certainly keep an eye out for that. Uh, especially since it means I can use more than just the uh, Katsi trilogy to to for music. I was running this in a campaign. Yeah, 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 yeah. The the the. You say if the, if the adventure you can run like a campaign, I understood. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You you can you can make the adventure that we are planning to publish uh, is correlated 
so you can use them like one shot or you can use them like a campaign and uh, and they are correlated so an event that you make in 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 a session maybe can affect uh, many aspects of the another adventure that you play uh, in another time so uh, it, this is what what we we try to do so mm -hmm. <laughs> but if, if you if you I, I i i say i think if you don't like the game if you don't like the rule if you don't like the 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 setting you can't dislike the art. So, the the, <laughs> the art of Jacopo Valetti was is amazing. So, I think the 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 weird world live uh, with the uh, art inside. So, you 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 have to check the weird world stuff only for the art. So, mm -hmm. what do you think? Yeah. Now, what would you guys be shooting for as far as a launch as far as a launch date for the Kickstarter proper? Uh, the, the date, sorry. Yep, the, the date is the um, 29th of February. Mm -hmm. uh, we decided the 29th because, you know, um, I, I think in English is froggier. Uh, in Italian is anno bisestile, the, the, the day with uh, an addition, uh, the year with an additional day in February. Leap and year. Leap year, leap year. Leap month. Leap month, okay. okay. <laughs> uh, I, 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 I saw um, a joke with, with a, a little frog leap. So mm -hmm. um, <laughs> we decided, yes, to celebrate the most weird day of the year, launching uh, our, our game on the last day of February. Mm -hmm. So on the, on the 29th, uh, we we will we will start and uh, the campaign will last uh, uh, 15 days and we will end the 15 of March I think 15 or 16 uh, I, I don't remember well but 15 days uh, very uh, straightforward campaign uh, uh, take it or leave it uh, the same usual Kickstarter things. Uh, Simone, of course, mm -hmm. he, he is dying inside thinking <laughs> about the uh, launch date. But yeah. uh, I think I think everything will be all right at, at the end. Yeah, mm -hmm. maybe uh, ten years if, in the future, Simone. If we reach the end, if we reach yeah, the end, Matteo. Yeah. yeah, of course. Yeah, and I, I will, like I said, I will certainly be looking forward to seeing how it how it develops. And once the Kickstarter is live, I'll, cer I'll certainly update this video. But um, and of course, of course, oh, I do want to give my thanks to you guys for taking the time out of your schedule to come all the way to my temple and brave the hell of time zones. <laughs> Thanks to you. You have a nice thank temple. You. <laughs> thank you, Mildra. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, and anytime you see fit to return, whether it's through for more of Weird World or for or for what whatever else is cooking up over at Tin Hat, the door is always open. As I often say thank around you. here, drinking is not mandatory, but it is encouraged. <laughs> And of course, a sincere thanks goes out to everyone who took the time out of their schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the madness. And there will be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here, on the open bar of the internet. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, stay fucking frosty, everybody! Stay weird! Thank <laughs> you.